Hi, uh, I'm JJ. I'm going to be, I work at IBM, and I'm going to talk about everything you know about Kubernetes in 19 slides. And yes, I do actually have awesome at IBM.com as my email address. <laughs> so the first thing first, it's called kubectuddle, because you want to cuddle your, uh, clus your clusters. So, and you will alias it to K at some point, because you're going to want to not write kubectuddle over and over and over again. First thing first, uh, inside of Kubernetes, containers are the smallest amount. Everything revolves around a container, and you can have multiple different layers of it. We will be seeing the next slide, which is right about now. Or ne There we go. They're called pods. Pods are actually what hold the container inside of it. As you can see, you can have uh, n or one plus n number of pods. You can have one container, or if you see over on uh, pod B there, you can have up to three. You can have like a log aggregator or whatever. Something called deployments are the way you actually tell Kubernetes to put out pods outside of there. So in this case, you have a deployment of two pods, and it will always make sure two pods are running on the Kubernetes uh, environment. Now, there are these things called nodes, and that's the actual level of compute that Kubernetes uses. And you, as you can see, it crosses every single machine across it. A node can be anything that runs a CPU, anything ranging from a Raspberry Pi to whatever. But most importantly, nodes don't actually matter. When you look at Kubernetes, all it is is a shared API to compute. And it will run exactly what you tell it to run. It's a shared API to compute. That's all it is. Next. Nice. So if something blows up, um, immediately, almost instantaneously, Kubernetes will try to spin it up somewhere else. If you look at that pod A2, needed a uh, replica set of two, so it immediately found another node that could run out. If pod B blew up, it moves over there. Okay, let's talk about some internal concepts of Kubernetes, also known as K8S. The S is important. Don't forget the S. They will yell at you. No? No. 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 There we go. So internally, Kubernetes, because you can have as many pods as you want, it has to have its own DNS service. So it's called kubeDNS. There's also another one now. But um, in general, and that right there on the right-hand side is an actual YAML file it creates a service to say that that's the one the way to do inside of it. Namespace is the also next very important part. It's a way to be able to cut up your Kubernetes um, environment into little smaller bits. So you can have QA, dev, prod if you need inside of it too. Namespaces are really important. A node port, don't use these, are basically a way to point from one service to a specific pod in a specific container. Don't use these. So, yeah. Now, you'll see load balancers more and more, um, or actually pretty much everywhere inside of Kubernetes, because you can have n number of pods. So you need to be able to, way to uh, roll out to as many of it is. So when you hit the service of that foo web right up there, it'll go to any of those pods C, C plus 1, C plus 2, C plus 3. Ingress. This is the hardest vanilla concept inside of Kubernetes. And I actually have two slides on this, because it's really hard to explain. Basically, first of all, don't run databases in Kubernetes. But assuming that pod D is a database, that's actually how you would uh, map everything together. It's a very bad example, but it actually shows how that YAML file can match up against this one. And I can send this to anyone who wants to actually take a deeper look at it. And there goes my pump. Let's talk about the ecosystem, because everything needs another ecosystem. And now, no, now. Come on, here we go, Helm. So, because we all need another fucking package manager, we have Helm. <laughs> um, it's basically a one-size-fits-all to get things running inside of Kubernetes. It's, it's, a, it's just another app, of, anyway. I have feelings there. Istio, basically with vanilla Kubernetes, you have a very basic kind of uh, a way of getting things done. You'll very quickly discover as you move to microservices, you need red-green deployments, intelligence routing. Istio is a way to answer that. It is extremely advanced, but it is fun to use, and it's worth it. Knative, I actually think it should be called K-serverless, because that's what it is. It's running serverless applications on side of, on side of Kubernetes. And you know, it's pretty cool. It's moving really fast. It's worth your time to look into, if you need to do that kind of work. And most importantly, take a picture of this one if you're taking pictures of any of these slides. Uh, that's all the cool stuff that I'm talking about. And yes, uh, I work at IBM Cloud. I can give you a free Kubernetes cluster, like a production one, for about a month if you want it. Just email me at awesome at ibm.com. And also, do your homework. Don't just take Kubernetes. Thank you. <laughs>